Hello folks, today I would like to talk about Calvinism, aka Reformed Theology, and why Calvinism, Reformed Theology, is neo-Gnosticism, modern-day Gnosticism, and why it is Antichrist. Calvinism is Antichrist because it denies Christ's death for all mankind, for all mankind's free will opportunity to accept God's love and mercy extended to a sinful world through his son. And because Calvinism adheres to the Gnostic belief that man is born inheriting a totally depraved, sinful nature, that does not have a free will to obey God, even though God's Son himself commands that we must repent, go and sin no more, be ye perfect, even as his heavenly Father is perfect, and follow him. He commands we follow him. Scripture says we must walk even as he walked. And Jesus said, unless we do so, we will likewise perish. Calvinism is forced to conclude that either Jesus was born with a totally depraved, sinful nature, or that Jesus was not born as a fully human man in the flesh. Okay? Now, yeah. Calvinism is neo-Gnosticism because Gnosticism teaches that we are born without a free will ability to choose good over evil because we uh, lost that after Adam, most Calvinists will say, which is easily destroyed by Cain because God, if anyone inherited uh, a totally depraved, sinful nature, an original sin nature, then it would have been Adam's firstborn, which was Cain. But we see God come to Cain in Genesis 4 and exhort him to choose good and not evil and said that if he does good, he will be accepted. And if he doesn't, doesn't then sin is crouching at his door and its desire is for you. Sin, sin is clearly a free will choice, okay? We have free will to choose. Choose this day whom you will serve, correct? Gnosticism also teaches that God created us to sin, that God created us to sin. Some Calvinist Reformed the theology folks will even say that God made Adam knowing he would sin and even intended him to sin. Gnosticism also teaches that nature is evil because nature is matter. Gnostics believed matter is evil. That's why they believe that our flesh is sinful because our flesh is made of the earth. It's made of matter. Gnostics believed matter was evil. They also believed Jesus didn't have our same human nature in the flesh, that he had a divine nature as well. He had a divine nature. Gnosticism teaches that we can't avoid sinning, that we can't stop sinning until we die. Gnosticism teaches that God is a sovereign monster who reserves the right to be unjust if he so decreed it, so decrees it. And that the Gnostics believed that they were elect because they had a special knowledge. And the word Gnosticism is from the Greek word gnosis, which means knowledge. You see, this 
is the very same mindset, the very same belief system that Calvinists have today, Reformed theology. Like I said, Gnostic gnosis means knowledge, which we see big time in uh, the Reformed theology, Reformed theology circles in Calvinism, because there is no group who is more into theology um, and knowledge uh, and philosophizing, and it's all about hermeneutics and uh, exegesis and eisegesis and this and that. It's salvation through knowledge. It's through salvation through knowledge. which Reformed theology, Calvinism, is the epitome of. They think they have God and Jesus all figured out. Even though Jesus was clear that who he is, who he is, comes to us not by flesh and blood, by human knowledge, but solely from divine revelation, directly from God the Father. In short, Calvinism is Gnosticism, which John, the Apostle John, called a deceiver and an antichrist. John called the Gnostics deceivers and antichrist. And to prove that they are Gnostic antichrists, Calvinists, just ask them if we are born corrupt, because that is precisely what Gnostics believe, who John called antichrists. Because they denied Jesus came in the same exact flesh that we inherit from Adam. Why? Because if original sin inherited depravity, total depravity as they call it, if, that's, if those are true, if the Augustinian Gnostic doctrine, and Augustine was a Manichaean Gnostic, by the way, folks, who came up with the doctrine of original sin, which the early church did not believe prior to Augustine. They believed in human free will ability to choose, to choose salvation, to choose good over evil. So, just ask them if we, to prove it, if they're antichrist, Gnostic antichrist, just ask them, if we are born with original sin, if we're born totally depraved. Uh, some Gnostics, I mean, Calvinists, will even go so far as to quote uh, their beloved uh, West, from their Westminster Confession that say, we sin every day in word, deed, and thought. Okay? Now, just ask them if we're born inheriting sin. Because this is precisely what the Gnostics believe, who the Apostle John called Antichrists. Because they denied Jesus came, like I said, in the same flesh as us. The same flesh that we inherit from Adam. Why? Because if original sin is true, if it's the true, then either Jesus Christ was born corrupted by sin born sinful, born a sinner, or he was not born as a fully human man from the seed of the woman, from the seed of David, that he is not a son of man, a son of Adam in the flesh. Calvinism is modern-day Gnosticism, neo-Gnosticism. John called the Gnostics deceivers who had the spirit of Antichrist. You see, Calvinists are forced to do away with human free will because they adhere to the Augustinian Gnostic doctrine of an original sin nature that says we inherit this totally depraved sin nature from Adam that will sin has no choice to sin. We will sin. Even 
after being born again as a new creature, where all things should have passed away. Yet, they believe this, but they believe we have no free will, and they believe that they are saved. They believe that they are God's elect. Even after they have said that they have been born again as a new creature, all the while deceived that they are living under condemnation, Romans 8.1. Romans 8 says there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, but there's a condition. Most people stop there. It says for those, there is no condemnation for those who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Jesus walked after the spirit. Jesus did not sin. Jesus commands us to go and sin no more. And sadly, they die deceived and damned in their sins under strong delusion. 2 Thessalonians 2, verses 10 through 12, that says that they because, received not the love of the truth about salvation, but had pleasure in unrighteousness, which 2 Thessalonians calls, which Paul calls, the deceivableness of unrighteousness. They believe we're elect, we're saved, we're good to go. Well, who are the, the elect exactly? How do you know that you are the elect? What is your fruit? Are you still sinning? Because sin is evil fruit. A tree is known by its fruit. Scripture says, he who sins is the devil, and whoever is born of God does not sin. And they are under the delusion that Jesus saves them in their sins. When scripture says Jesus came to save from sin. Never understanding that the purpose of grace, and this is Calvinists and Reformed theology are huge on grace, but they, they redefine grace as unmerited favor. Never understanding that the true purpose of grace is not a covering, which is Old Covenant, a covering for our sins, but rather a teacher of obedience, a teacher of obedience. Titus 2, 11, 12 says, For this is the grace of God that brings salvation. For this is the grace of God that you have, that brings salvation, that we should teaching us to deny ungodliness, that we should live soberly, righteously, to deny, unworldly, to deny worldly lusts, that we should live soberly, righteously in this present age. That's what grace does, folks. It's a teacher, also known as the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of grace who leads us into all truth, who convicts of sin, righteousness, and judgment. That's the ministry of the Holy Spirit. But these guys say, hey, we can't help but sin. They have no conviction. So which spirit is leading them? It is the spirit, the Gnostic spirit of Antichrist. Grace is a teacher of godliness, of holiness, of obedience. Without holiness, no one shall see the Lord. Which is in direct disobedience to Hebrews 5.9 which says that Christ is the Savior of those who obey him. It says Jesus is the Savior of those who obey him, not the Savior of the elect, those who have self-proclaimed themselves as elect. How do you know you're elect? What's the proof? Calvinist? It's in direct opposition to Jesus who commands that we must cease from all sin, repent, which is what repent means, and go and sin no more. And follow me, he said. Take my yoke upon me, 
yourself and learn from me and walk even as Christ walked, which is to walk after the Spirit. Like Paul says, those who, there is no condemnation for those who walk in the Spirit, after the Spirit and not after the flesh. 1 Peter 4 1. For then, for as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For the, that he that has suffered in the flesh, has ceased from sin. Let me read that again. For much, for as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind, the same mind of Christ. For he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. Now, At best, Calvinism is semi-Gnosticism. John called the Gnostics deceivers and antichrists. 1 John 4, 1-3 Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby you know the Spirit of God this is how we know the Spirit of God, folks. I don't know why people are afraid to apply this. Maybe they're afraid to apply it because maybe they're, they, they might find out that they themselves fit this definition of what an Antichrist is. Every spirit that confesses, this is how we know, every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. They don't believe Jesus came in the same flesh as us. They believe he had a dual nature. They believe that he had some superhuman ability, that he was predestined, predestined that he couldn't sin because a lot of them believed because he was God, you know, that he was unable to sin. Then what was the point of Jesus being tempted? What was the point of his temptation? Jesus could have failed. Yes, Jesus was predestined to be the Messiah, but he could have failed, but he didn't. And that's what makes him so wonderful, because he was a man, a fully human man, who overcame as a man in the flesh, the son of man, a descendant of Adam, down through the seed of David and through the seed of the woman, in the flesh, the same flesh we inherit. Let me read it again. Let me finish. Every spirit, this is how we know the spirit of Antichrist, every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now is already in the world. It's in the world, folks. The spirit of Antichrist denies that Jesus Christ came in the flesh. And they can say Jesus came in the flesh, but they really don't believe that he came in our flesh. They don't believe he was just like us, a fully human, flesh and blood man and descendant of Adam, son of man, which was Jesus' favorite title for himself, the son of man who came in the flesh. All right, that's all, folks. God bless.